it's time to crack on with the eggs. Oh, oh ha ha, crack shit. on. Make what the, bit. what the hell? Holy shit. What is with you British people and freaking putting water back into cooked rice? What is, what's wrong with you guys? Why is this happening? Why does this keep happening? Chef Brian Tsao here, not your typical chef. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Uncle Roger disgusted by this egg fried rice video by the BBC. I cannot wait. Before I go on with today's video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you took a quick second and followed Mission Sandwich on Instagram. It's the official account of my upcoming sandwich shop opening in Williamsburg, Brooklyn this April. If you're new to the channel, I am a professional chef with 17 years of experience. I've defeated Bobby Flay on the Food Network show, Beat Bobby Flay, as well as run the world-renowned kitchen of Beauty in Essex located right here in New York City. The views and opinions expressed in this show are exactly that they're just my views and opinions and I'm drawing from my experience as a professional in the culinary industry this video is meant to be for fun and educational purposes however I do get things wrong so if I do say something incorrectly or you have something to add please let me know in the comments below and with that out of the way let's see who messes up in the kitchen this week the BBC good food how to make egg fried rice video what is BBC let me see is it like something dirty like big <laughs> oh, it's the British Podcasting Corporation. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Roger, Uncle Roger's very disappointed by what Let's BBC stands video. for in this video's context. Hersha's easiest ever egg fried rice. Okay. BBC egg thing. Egg fried rice. Don't be afraid. This is really simple. It's cheap. It's delicious. Really satisfying. That's what egg fried rice is. Simple, cheap and easy, or at least it's supposed to be. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Who afraid of egg fried rice? <laughs> it's the most common dish. Everybody eat egg fried rice. So a lot of people get afraid of cooking with rice, but you can follow a really simple rule, which is for every one part rice you have, you need two parts water. It's as simple as that. Who? Why you measure water with cup? Just use finger, finger. You put rice, put water, until finger, first joint, first <laughs> yes. joint. Yes, okay. So uh, I remember working uh, in kitchens and I always knew the, the finger technique. Let's talk about the finger technique first, which is you have your rice cooker. It's in this pot that inserts into a rice cooker or it doesn't even have to be a rice cooker. It can be on the stove top as well. You rinse off the rice. You have to do it a few times to remove the excess starch. And then what you do is you put enough water so that when you insert your finger, the water goes up to your first knuckle, the line of your first knuckle. So your finger sits on top of the rice, not into the rice, you just Rest your, I keep using my middle finger. Well, that's what I'm, I, that's what I legit use when I do this method. Put your finger on top of the rice. Don't insert it into the rice. Remember there's water in here already and it has to go up to the first knuckle. If it's over the knuckle, you dump a little water out. If it's a little below the knuckle, you put in a little bit more water. However, this is a little flawed in that if you have a big ass hand like me and a big middle finger like I do, I know that I have to do it a little above my fingernail, because I also have big nails. Someone who's smaller, a very petite person, may need to go over that knuckle. You, ha you have to, it's one of those feel things and you learn it as you do it more. It's just like anything else. The more you practice it, the better you will become at it. However, in a professional kitchen context, which this video is not geared for, it's actually very useful to have a very specific measurement of whether it's, you know, one quart of rice to a quart and a half of water or two quarts. A good rule of thumb to me, if I'm telling someone who's brand spanking new to cooking, I generally say um, two to one, two parts water to one part rice, but go a little below two. I just say two to one to keep it simple for them, but I'm just like little below two parts. That's the rule of thumb. It changes with the type of rice. If it's like a wild grain rice, it's gonna be a ton more water. If it's a short grain rice, it's gonna be slightly less. Like I said, the two to one, slightly less than two parts. 
is a good area to start with. Again, it depends on the type of rice. The finger thing is tested and true, but it also depends on the size of your finger. But 99% of Asian households, that's exactly how they're cooking their rice. Uh, not with British tea cup. I, uh, <laughs> first step all wrong already. I am not confident this video is gonna be good. Enough rice for around two people. So now the rice is on. Wait, so you don't wash the rice? Yeah, how didn't you wash don't the rice. wash the rice, just cook the rice. Now the rice stinky like you. Where you learn how to make rice? Some white people cooking <laughs> school or something. It is important to clean your rice. You know, this rice has been sitting in bags, but before that it was sitting out drying. So whatever is in the freaking atmosphere of the rice, you wanna clean the rice. And it also removes excess starch. But the main thing is you wanna clean the rice. It's uh it can be a little dirty. So now the rice is on, it's time to crack on with the eggs. Oh, oh ha ha, crack Shit. on. I see what you're doing. So punny, so humorous. <laughs> I'm dying laughing, I said now. <laughs> I've got a frying pan here. Dad jokes, man. Holy heat. shit. And then just add a little bit of oil. Okay. So let that heat up. Oil in a pan. No wok. I'm surprised Uncle Roger isn't freaking out about no wok. Also, uh, Hersha um, cracked the egg on the side of the bowl. The best way to crack eggs is actually on a flat surface. Don't go crazy because you'll get egg all over the place. But if you gently tap it, you, you actually don't need to use as much force if you tap it on a flat surface. It'll crack much easier. You'll have a less chance of the egg streaming on the side of the bowl or the egg kind of moving around and potentially dumping out the other egg that you cracked into it previously, always onto a flat surface. In fact, Gordon did that in his egg fried rice video. He mentioned specifically, crack your eggs on a flat surface. Okay, egg and egg fried rice. I'm trying to do this one-handed. <laughs> I'm glad, oh. Uncle Roger. Oh, okay. Hershey did the one hand, impressive. the one hand technique. Pretty impressive, I give you that. It halfway, once it's on a simmer, you want to cook it for around 10 minutes. You know what I don't like? Uncle Roger don't like induction stove. You know, those stove with no fire. Uncle Roger need the fire. Induction stoves, uh, I prefer to work with fire, but as time goes on and, you know, there's greenhouse gases and watching out for our natural resources and stuff like that, um, there's definitely been a big push for, you know, whether it's apartment buildings or even in professional restaurants to use more induction burning. Um, you know, electricity is supposed to be renewable energy. That's a whole nother topic I don't want to get into. But you know, there are some benefits in using induction cooking. Uh, number one, it does not generate a lot of heat. So you won't need to um, exhaust it because there's no open flame. But it's a very efficient transfer of heat. I, I don't know the science behind it. Adam Ragusea d did an incredible video about what induction cooking is. Basically, it works with magnets. It's, um, you know, an effect that the magnet has onto the pan and it's actually heating the pan. It's not a heat source that's going onto the pan and then the pan cooking your product. It's literally causing the pan to create heat. It's pretty fascinating. Um, it's a very efficient transfer of heat and professional kitchens that are all induction are not hot, which is amazing, because that's the one thing I hate about professional kitchens most, is how hot they get. Wang your eggs in. Okay. Wang your, what, what she say? What, what she, she say? say? I didn't hear wang your eggs in. Wang your eggs in. Wang Don't put in. wang anywhere near your <laughs> egg fried rice. Don't wang anything in kitchen, okay? That's how I got fired from Chinese restaurants. <laughs> Onto a plate, leave it to one side. To the side. All right, uh, I've seen this before too. I've seen some classmates from culinary school like, yeah, I make an awesome fried rice. I'm like, okay. And uh, they'll make it for me and they'll do that. They'll cook the egg first and then set it aside. It's like, you, you, dude, you fucked up already. Uh, sure, we'll see what happens next. I, I don't agree with that technique, cooking the egg first and then setting it aside. You should have everything ready to go. Uh, maybe because this is for, for a home cook recipe, let's see what happens next. Rice hey, is cooking, okay. The rice so the rice is very moist. Looks like a short grain rice. I can't really tell. If it was a short grain rice, two parts water is too much. I would go more like one and a half. This end product, if she allowed the water to cook into the rice, will be very moist and sticky. And it's not what you want for, for fried rice, period. I mentioned in other videos, you generally want to use day old rice. So she's making fresh rice that's way too moist for egg fried rice. 
This is not looking good. And she cooked the egg and set it aside. Pre-cooked the egg and set it aside. This is not looking good, but let's keep watching. But you lying to <laughs> Okay, Uncle Roger so definitely wet. agrees. Drain it. Drain Okay, so it, it's what I thought. I, I said it was one of two things. Either she was making kanji or she was boiling rice. I will tell you, bo <laughs> look at Uncle Roger's face. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Roger's totally appalled. Listen, I agree with him. If this happened in any pro kitchen where they sell egg fried rice, this would be abysmal. Boiling rice is a legit technique for cooking rice. I remember specifically my chef instructor in culinary school. Not that I needed my chef instructor to tell me this, but he said, you know, like one of the ways to cook rice is by boiling it. However, you know, he did preface, and I've never seen it done like that in my entire life. I grew up eating rice. He did say, you know, it's an old world technique. It's not really done anymore, but you can boil rice and you boil it and then you can strain it out. However, this is the worst possible rice you could use for egg fried rice. What's she doing? <laughs> What's she doing? Drain the rice. Oh my God. You're <laughs> killing me, woman. I uh, drained the rice. She the rice. <laughs> she draining rice with colander. Hi. How can you drain rice with colander? This is not pasta. I've never seen anyone drain rice. Is your rice too wet? You fucked up. Don't bring colander into your rice cooking. Hi. Uh, get a nice rice cooker. Don't mess with saucepan like this lady. The real way to have done it is just enough water. So by the time all the water is absorbed into the rice and whatever excess water has been evaporated, your rice is perfectly cooked. Obviously, that's not the case here. Hersha is clearly an Asian woman, and I'm sure she knows how to cook rice without using a colander, so I'm a little surprised. If your rice too wet, you recook the rice. No way to save wet rice. Has quite a lot of starch in it, which will make what it. The, what the hell? Holy shit! What is with you, British people, and freaking putting water back into cooked rice? What is? What's wrong with you guys? Why is this happening? Why does this keep happening? What the hell? Uncle Roger, <laughs> so upset. I put my leg down from chair. Why are you running water to run water? <laughs> You're ruining the rice. You just... The rice is already cooked. It's already, it's rice and water. You have enough water in there. You had excess water that you drained out. And I think I heard her say that she, oh, fuck. Oh God. I think I heard her say she's trying to cool down the rice and she's treating it like pasta at this point. But if you wanted to cool down the rice, you get a sheet tray or, or something like, some, uh, get a tray, get a plate, get a few plates and pour, put that rice on there and spread it out. That'll cool the rice quickly. And it'll also help get rid of excess moisture. You keep, you, you Brits keep putting this fucking extra water into rice, why? Except for Gordon, he didn't do that, but. Who cook rice like this? <laughs> how did this woman get on BBC Food? Uh, yeah, never well, how did Uncle she Roger, get on Uncle BBC? Roger teach masterclass on making rice, but this woman calling the, on the rice, <laughs> then water through the rice. I've never seen that. I've heard of boiling rice, but rinsing it with <sighs> Uncle Roger sat now. <laughs> oh, this was in 2020. Me now. And then just add your garlic and ginger. Garlic, garlic and ginger. ginger. Okay, it classic, looks like classic bell Asian season. Or tomatoes. Okay. All right, garlic and ginger I'm okay with. I'm not too down with the peppers. Although, you know, you, you really can put almost any... No, you know what? No, I take that back. You can't put just almost anything. We learned that from the Jamie Oliver episode and, <laughs> and the chili jam and the tofu. But at, at least she's sauteing it. And, you know, again, you're when you cook something overheat, what, you're, what are you doing? You know, you're doing many things, but one of the main things is you're removing the water content and... I men mentioned this all the time, the enemy of flavor is water. When you remove the water, you condense the natural flavors that are in there. So I like this, and she's getting a good color on it. As far as the egg fried rices that I've made in the past, typically don't get too much color on whatever veggie product is in there. You just get it cooked and mix it into the rice, but let's keep watching. Okay, oh, her wet the... ass rice. So she went straight from the colander in... <sighs> She went straight from the colander of 
with that wet ass rice and put it into the pan. So this rice was already cooked with way too much moisture. So much moisture, it had to get strained with a colander. She rinsed it and then she let it sit there. And you know, this is a colander, it's, it's everything's, all those, all those rices are all next to each other. Like, hey, hey man, what's going on? And this rice is going like, yeah, yeah I'm all right. You know, there's a little, little moist in here, but what are you gonna do? You know? All this rice is stuck in there. And when, when this rice is scrunched up, you know, if you put it into a ball, there's nowhere for the excess moisture to evaporate. Bring and then her pre-cooked egg. Scallion. Okay. All right. I would have put in the scallion a little later. Peas. I, I would have put in everything at this point except for the, except for the, um, geez, I'm lost. I'm so pissed right now. Like, I, whatever. Fuck it. About three, uh, I, I was going to say, uh, I would have waited to put in the scallion. But. This looks okay, but look too healthy. Where's your MSG? <laughs> you don't use MSG. How to make good egg fried rice? This is just white people egg fried rice. MSG is the, the king of flavor. If you said it's the life, king of flavor, I agree. I if agree with that. If you're happy in life, use MSG. Plate up. All right, the and it's done. Oh, so no, she says. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I think Uncle Roger's gonna bitch about a metal spoon on a nonstick pan. It depends. There's uh, nonstick pan technology has come so far these days. You can take a metal utensil and scrape it onto the pan. She's using a spoon that's way too small if she's trying to put it onto a serving plate. If this was a professional kitchen atmosphere, you want to get the hot food from a hot pan onto a, a warmed plate as fast as possible. And if you have to scoop with a conventional spoon 15 times to put out the portion, you're losing precious seconds and temperature of the rice. So you'd, you'd want to use a full-size serving spoon and and get that rice onto the plate as fast as possible so that you don't lose any temperature and it gets to the customer as hot as it can possibly be. Like your mindset should basically be, I wanna get this food to the customer at a temperature where it's practically off of the pan. Because remember, the customer's eating the food and they're chit-chatting, they're having a drink. They're not 100% focused on the food. They're typically doing something else. And like I said, every second you don't consume it, you lose temperature. And as far as the way I, I referred to it, you know, the food is dying every second that it's cooling down. You're using metal to scrape your saucepan. <laughs> Hiya, this is non-stick saucepan. Cannot use metal. Hiya, it, it, your, this your is, pan I forgot what, is never- I forgot what kind of pan that's called. That's definitely not Teflon. Teflon's, you know, like probably one of the oldest technologies as far as non-stick pans go. That you definitely don't want to use any type of metal tool against the surface. Typically want to use a wood spoon or a, a rubber spatula or something like that. But for that particular pan, I forgot what it's called. What, like what that coating's called, but that's totally fine. If, you, if metal I use utensil. metal on saucepan at home growing up, I will be this old. No more parents. Why are you often? I use metal on saucepan. Mom don't want me anymore. Uncle Roger want a suicide. So delicious. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> You're Why proud you of yourself. Your She's proud of herself. Admittedly, admittedly, looking at that beauty shot of the rice. Don't look bad. Doesn't look terrible. I'll give her that much. I'm sure if I taste it, it'd be okay. No, wait a second. She didn't season it. There was no salt, no nothing. This is some bland ass right No, fuck it, I take it back. It's gonna be- So, you, you messed up everything. You scraped saucepan with metal. You dry the rice and wet the rice and dry the rice with <laughs> colander. You don't use MSG. Why this woman proud of herself? Egg fried rice, Uncle Roger know how to make egg fried rice and Uncle Roger three year old. And this lady, I don't know, 34. Make an egg fried rice on induction hob. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, did I miss it? Did she, we didn't see her put any soy sauce or sesame oil or or, or salt or MSG? There's no flavor, and this is a bland ass, bland ass BBC fried rice. Boring. But I was gonna come up with an acronym, I can't do it. But anyway, it, it, this is gonna be a very plain Jane fried rice. All right, in past videos, I've certainly talked my fair share of shit. You know, if you really consider the context of this video, even the Jamie Oliver one, which that was atrocious, I would take this fried rice over that. You know, the context of this video is for the home cooks. And, and even many of the commenters in previous videos had mentioned that. Context is this is for a home cook. And the home cook is, 
usually, you know, intimidated by the kitchen already. I'm assuming the way this video was formed was how do we make it as easy as possible for the home cook? And you know what? If there was someone that came to me, I wouldn't show them this way. I wouldn't even send them to this video as a benchmark. However, I can kind of understand it. Regardless of that, technique was really piss poor. If you put this rice in front of me, again, if someone gave it to me and I was a house guest, I would never turn it down. Always appreciative of the food people give me. However, if this was in a professional restaurant setting and they presented this dish to me, I would give this probably a one out of 10, easy. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. If you enjoy this series and wanna support me further, please consider becoming a patron. Link in the description below. There, it'll take you to my official Patreon page where there's multiple tiers with all different kinds of awesome perks. Sign up, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. With that said, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.